Okay, so I posted this render on Instagram and immediately got tons of requests for a tutorial for it. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make this infinite loop really cool. Let's get into it. All right, so first let's make that grid pattern. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, plane. I'm gonna hit S8. And make sure you hit S8 specifically because when we do run the camera through, we gotta make sure that it is a seamless infinite loop. So make sure you stay within this bounding box. All right, so I'm gonna hit Tab here, right click. I'm gonna hit Subdivide. And then under the under this subdivide, I'm gonna hit 30. That's how many blocks we're gonna get. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to tab, I'm gonna hit F3 and type in edge, and go to edge split. So that's gonna split these edges so when we go to the smooth modifier, right over here, it splits them up. All right, next we're gonna do is take it and add in a solidify modifier, and then click it a couple times. Also, make sure you hit control A, and apply scale, forgot to do that, so we can get some accurate displacement once we get to that part. So just click it, tell you want it as thick as you want. I want them to be very, very much boxes, so I'm just gonna click it, it's pretty boxy. All right, the cool thing about the smooth is that if you take this repeat, you can make it smaller, or you can take the factor and make it bigger or smaller. So it's pretty cool and flexible when it comes to this type of look. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna make this very high poly once we start animating it. So you are gonna get some slow stuff until we disable it but let's get in the bevel. So once we've beveled it, let's go down here on the width and just bevel it to however you'd like. I'm gonna go to there and I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it three segments. So just like that, now we have these nice beveled cubes and all we can do is shade smooth. And so now we have a bunch of really interesting cubes, but we need to displace it. So let's go ahead, add modifier, add displacement. Now let's make sure I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of these and just bring this displacement all the way up above everything so that this displacement doesn't mess with those modifiers. Make sure the hierarchy is correct. So I'm gonna click new, click this little button here, image or movie, I'm gonna to go to clouds and I don't like that. So I'm gonna go bring the depth all the way down to zero and the size, I'm gonna bring the size up to say three. So now we have these nice wavy things. You could see when I was playing with it, it was very laggy, and that's because we are working with 100,000 tries, 51,000 faces, things like that. So as you're working, just take the bevel, click this little computer icon, and I'm gonna go back to shade flat, and that will disable, and so now we're just working with 11,000 tries. So now we have this, super easy, super cool. Let's animate it. Let's go to the empty, plane axis, and say, I'm just gonna, just for visibility, I'm gonna hit G and just bring him up. And then make sure you have this guy. I'm just gonna name him Move, because it's gonna make everything move. So go back to Displacement here, right on Local, go to Object, and click that Empty. So that now when we move it, it moves everything. So I'm gonna give myself 120 frames for this animation for now. I'm gonna go up to the Edit, Preferences, and make sure in my Animation tab here, that Default, Default interpolation is set to linear. Now let's animate. So here on the uh, on the empty, let's see which way I want to animate it. Let's see, let's do this. So a lot of people actually thought I used the wave modifier, which is pretty common, but I just use displacement that kind of looks like a wave. So it's a pretty cool hack. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the back arrow to go to frame zero. The reason we're doing that is because we, we want to use motion blur. So first, let's go and switch to the EV render engine. And right here, make sure motion blur is selected. And the reason why we're going to frame zero is because we start here and the animation starts here, we will have one frame of no motion blur. And then this frame will have motion blur. So go back to frame zero and that'll start there. So go back to the controls here, hit the little keyframe, go to the very end and type in three, six, zero, 360 degrees, which will make this a looping animation. And now we have this. So it looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and keep working. We need to make sure that this will be a seamless loop. So right now, if we were to just take this and say, add it to a new collection, call it collection two, and then go to collection and sense and bring it over like this, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna see a seam right here. You can see where that connects. You can see where it starts and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a seamless displacement. So let's go ahead and get an empty add the plane axis and hold down control so that it snaps to the grid and goes to the very edge of our composition here, our displacement. That's very, very important for seamless looping. Now we're gonna take this guy here, collapse the displacement, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a mirror modifier. Select the new empty, 
So I'm just going to name that empty. I'm going to double click and call it mirror. Go back to displacement. We've got mirror selected. Uncheck X and click Y. And now you can see you can't really tell where the displacement stops. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to the collection instance, collection two, and we'll bring it all the way to the end. And you can see you can't tell when it stops. So it's really nice when you work going through is to be able to not be able to see those seams very obviously. Obviously, if you look really hard, you can see it stops there because it's mirroring. But when we actually flying through it, it'll be invisible. All right, now let's go ahead and add in our camera. So shift A, add in the camera, holding down control, just bringing him to the very back of our scene and bringing up, up a little bit. Your placement will, on the Y will want to be eight there to make sure it's at the very edge of your scene. Now let's go ahead and just bring them up. So 80 degrees, zero, negative 180. Now he is pointing perfectly straight. And then let's animate him as well. So start at frame zero, hit the keyframe on Y, go to the very end and go to, let's see, negative 24, I think it'll be, hold on. See, bring him forward, yes. So negative 24, I believe, is the position we want. So negative 2, 4. And that puts him at the very edge of our new composition. So that will make it loopable. So click on him, insert the keyframe, and let's go ahead and add in a collection instance and test out to see if it loops seamlessly. So let's do one more just to see it work. And then let's watch the animation. We'll go to the very end. And okay, cool. It loops seamlessly. All right, next thing we're going to do is on our camera settings, we want it to be pretty wide angle. So we're gonna, on the focal length, I'm going to say 24. And then once we do that, it will seem faster. So we might need to lower our frames, but we'll do that later. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another collection and bring him up. So we want a really cool look to this. So we want the camera to be super close to the ground and the sky to be super close to the camera, which gives it that really dynamic look. So let's bring this, bring the camera down a little bit and we should be set on how that's gonna look. Cool, all right, now let's just go ahead and start duplicating stuff and making our scene. Okay, so now we have this. So what I like to do just compositionally is take the camera, hit R, and just bring it like that. And that just kind of gives it this really cool effect when we're going sideways. And let's just preview how it looks with that bevel back in place. Shading smooth. So that's how this looks. And if we hit Z and go to render view here in Eevee, can't see much. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so what we're gonna do next is add in lighting and materials. So we don't actually have to add any lights, just materials, because we're gonna be using the one of the materials as a light, as you'll see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit new, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a basic metallic shader and make him fairly dark. And then what I'm gonna do here is add in another material, click new, and make an emission material, which will be a light. I'm gonna give it a strength of 30 for now and make him blue. All right, now that it, we have that, we need to select faces and we need to select them randomly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here, face select here, click, select one, right up here on select, right down here on select random, just do that. And then that's too many, we want it to just be very minimal. So we'll take this percent here and just play with it until we like the amount of faces we have selected, which will be our lights in the scene. This looks pretty nice. So what I'll do is I'll hit the material we want and click assign, and it's gonna assign that to that material. And then we hit Z and rendered, you're gonna see, bam, we have lots of nice light. So in my world settings here, I'm gonna go up to the world settings, click that, and bring it all the way down to black. All right, so we'll imp improve lighting later. Let's go ahead and mess, go back and mess with the displacement to make it look a little bit better. So right here, let's go ahead and make it nice and big, and then go in there and say, I'm gonna give the displacement a four, and then we'll go back and check that. Cool, it's looking really crazy. All right, so I'm going to bring my camera down a little bit to get closer to the floor. And we have this. All right, cool. So this is how we have it looking right now. Let's go to the bloom settings here 
and bring our bloom down a little bit because it's a little bit too intense and then we have that all right so I want to add some red here so we're just gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go ahead back to my materials add in another material make it new make an emission shader give it a strength of 10 I'm gonna give it 10 for now make it nice and orange go back to random selection click one select random I'm gonna give it an even smaller selection base here hit the seed and I'll assign and so once we go back to rendered view now we get some really good light so if you don't like how intense these lights are which I don't currently first off you can go ahead to your metallic and bring it down so that your scene isn't quite so bright I'm gonna press play here I'm gonna get some major lag currently running a laptop but in about a week upgrading the laptop we won't have any more lag I apologize for the lag but this is how it's gonna look for now let's go ahead and add that bevel back in and get so there you go so if we want to make sure just one last time to make sure this runs through nice and seamlessly and repeat so so it's perfect it's seamless it works we have a really nice look we'll go back to render view and just pop through some of these frames and see how it looks and it looks super cool and you can play with the lighting see how it looks sometimes you just go ahead and play with different uh, lighting compositions sometimes green is a really cool option just completely changes the look and yeah so if you want to export it go down to this little camera icon select where you want to save it go from PNG to FF MPEG video encoding change to MP4 and change from medium quality to perceptually lossless and then go to render render animation so there you go I hope you guys enjoyed this you can go to my Instagram if you see some stuff that you want to see me make I post stuff on there all the time so there you go thanks for watching